Alright, so let's look at how we can set up reference images in 3ds Max. So these are the two reference images that I'll be putting into 3ds Max. You can see that I've renamed them front and side and I've also put in the dimensions of the image um, in the name itself because that's going to help us out a bit later. You can get to the dimensions by right clicking, going to properties and under the details tab you can see the dimensions right here. So in 3ds Max let's create a plane so you can find that under create geometry plane and at the moment it can be any size uh, but what's important is that in the parameters down here is we have a length and width segment of 1. So this is going to be our front so we can rename it on the left so let's rotate this 90s in the X and in our translate we can zero these numbers out so it's sitting right in the center great so let's get our first reference image and we can put it on to this image right here so I'm going to press M on the keyboard to bring up my materials editor it's going to resize that and what I want to do here is I want to drag in a physical material Okay, drag that into the view one and then I want to type into the search box a bitmap so this is the reference image that we're going to be using um, you can pick any of these but the one that's down here under general usually is fine so it asks for you to navigate to that image and what we want to do is grab the out node this little ball here and we want to plug that into the base color in our color uh, our base color map in our physical shader so what we can do now is double click this material right click assign material to selection and you can see that we have our image here so if it's not showing up just make sure you have this button pressed so it says show shaded material in viewport and what we want to do as well is make sure that the roughness we can set that all the way up so it's not getting affected too much by any sort of lights um, and that should be fine so right now the aspect ratio isn't correct so yours so it could look something like this um, it could look something like this um, so we've got to make sure it's looking right so if we go to our modify tab we can go back to the parameters and in the length and width what we can do is set those images uh, the image dimensions in in this box here so the width I want this to be 1186 1186 and in the height I want it to be 1858 1858 great so this is looking right and then what we can do now is we can copy this to make our side view so we can just go into our rotate tool having our angle snap on and holding shift we can rotate that 90 degrees and we want to copy this so we know the length and width is going to be fine, we just got to change the image on this one. Let's rename this side image. And let's go back into our material editor. And we can copy all of this, so we can draw a marquee over all of that, hold down shift and drag. Okay. So in this case, I want to apply this material to this reference image and I want to change that bitmap to the side so we can go scroll down uh, in the properties here and click this link 
and then we can just navigate to the sign. And then we can just write, um, move these guys back a bit into place. Actually, what I want to do is center everything first. And I want to scale these back down. So right now they're a bit too large. You can see my grid here. If I create a box, and I'm just going to make the height of this box 1.8 meters as a reference and one meter wide and let's zero that out so let's scale these guys down so they're roughly around that size and in our front view we can just bring this guy up a bit and then move these guys back It's still a bit too big, we can just bring that down. Alright, we just want to make sure they're sitting right on top of that ground plane. Bring them in a bit closer. Great, and that's how we've set up our reference image. Um, what we can do to make this work a bit better for us is to make sure that we don't click it by accident. So if we were to, let's say, start modeling and we want to, let's say, reduce that, let's center this guy up a bit. And let's say we go into our modifier tab, we put an edit poly on top, and we want to do some edits. We do run into a couple issues because we can then accidentally select the back image, uh, and that becomes annoying. And we can go into X ray mode by pressing Alt X to see through, but sometimes it is easier to go into wireframe mode by pressing F3, but as you can see the back image planes go into wireframe as well so we can't see what's happening. Um, so there's a couple things we can do to stop that from happening. So in our explorer here we can go to our, our layers tab just by this, this button at the bottom here and what we can do is we can highlight the front image and side image and let's drag that into our default and in our default layer we can right click and go to properties and we want to change the layer properties to shaded and that should be fine and in our front image we can right click go to properties and we want this to be driven by the layer that it's sitting in. So the display properties currently is by object. If we click that, it's now by layer. And let's do the same for the side image. Now you can see I can go into F3 mode wireframe and the reference image behind is still um, displaying correctly. And in our layers property, we want to uncheck show frozen in gray. And that will allow us to basically see the image without selecting it by accident and go into wireframe mode without, um, without the reference image disappearing on us as well.